Crypto Life, the Crypto Crackheads. Today is Friday, August 20th, 2021, and turn it up to times two speed for initiation of timification. This is a Bitcoin overall market view, uh, crypto market view video. So right now, this you're looking at the chart of the dollar index versus other, um, I think, G8 countries or G6 countries. It's indexed uh, strength relative to the strength of other uh, countries with um, within this composite. And so right now, this is the weekly chart. The dollar recently got rejected from this key weekly horizontal and this downturn here from March to April was happening when Bitcoin was squeaking in higher highs and right when it started pumping on the week is when a big downturn in Bitcoin happened. In Bitcoin's recent pump coincides, I think with this candle of rejection here, it might be close. Let's see here, July 19th, go to Bitcoin, might be a little off. Go to the daily chart, the week of July 19th. Yep, see, look, July 21st. So Bitcoin started pumping right as that rejection happened. So that rejection coincided with Bitcoin's uh, pump and now it broke past that rejection with full force as Bitcoin went on a tear. And so this is to say that the chance of a Bitcoin correction is increasing with this information just from Dixie or DXY, the strength of the dollar and how Bitcoin typically reacts to it. Does it have to react to it? Absolutely not. However, it reacted almost perfectly with this rejection. So I would assume that it reacts pretty closely with a breakage of that horizontal line. So that is the first little bit of news. Now the trend is up. So if you're trading, you know, the trend of altcoins that are all up and all that good stuff, I mean, I definitely do not want this video to influence you to trade um, a reversal or anything to that effect. However, reasons to be cautious. All right, because it's pretty obvious the trend is up right now. And we've already had our target set for quite some time uh, throughout all the videos. So I'm going to be doing something a little bit different here. Now, the day I'm going to throw on, I'm on Bitcoin now, I'm going to throw on the daily 10, 200 EMA and 200 MA. Which I've already outlined here. So I've drawn over this. See how I drew over this and I've drawn it in. All right. So what you can see here. Let's go down to something like the hour scale, but we're still viewing the chart. With the longer term EMA zone. So you've recently had the daily 10 EMA cross above the daily 200 MA, not EMA, MA, after a point in which price was under the daily 200 and, uh, EMA and MA. All right. So typically that gives that often gives a bullish push. However, another word of warning is. In 2013, price really didn't fill out anything under these moving averages and it essentially bounced off of it. But all the times that Bitcoin has closed below these uh, two orange lines, one is the EMA and one is the MA. So the, the, the brighter orange line moves faster. So in an uptrend, the bright orange is above, is above, the, um, is above the duller one. And in downturns, they cross. Not at the very top or anything, but they cross. All right. So what we're staring at here, let me get rid of price. Let me get rid of the, the 10 as well. Is you have price filled out a range here. So I'm going to fill in this little area with pink. Fill in that little area with pink marker. Fill in this area with pink marker. So those are all the times in history that something to that effect has happened. 2013, price did not fill out anything under these, so it's not anywhere similar. So now put price back on. You can see that the first time that price enters that pink area, and here it actually did it, yeah, did it here. Every single time it failed. And mix that with the idea that Dixie it just broke a key area 
I wanted everybody to be cautious and aware that a downturn could happen at any moment now. <laughs> um, even though it's been defying, you know, my thoughts on that, I was thinking 42.3, we'd get a little trickle down to 36.5. It came up about $1,000 short, only went down to 37.5 and kept uh, pumping. So Bitcoin could easily keep moving up. I don't want to scare anybody out of good long positions holding now. However, I'm giving you reasons uh, to be cautious with not holding tether right now, essentially. So right now in my personal account, I'm probably holding 35 to 40% tether. So I sold, um, I was holding positions in Dash that were at a good profit, maybe 1.4 X from my average in, maybe one, yeah, actually maybe more like 1.6. Uh, and I sold that, I sold the rest at 220. And I sold um, most of my altcoins that are not staked. My staking coins, I'm not touching. However, things to this effect, uh, and, the, and the reasons they're stacking up, is I'm getting signs that holding Tether right now might be a pretty good idea. And I'm not saying lower lows past 30K or anything. However, it looks like something aggressive and fast might happen soon to the downside. Might might and these are reasons why you might consider it as a strong possibility maybe not the most probable because right now the daily trends up weekly trends up four hour trends up everything is up right now um so another thing that i'm seeing in the charts that's making me a little weary and spooked me um out of my you know huddle positions here not my long-term huddle positions but my you know my short-term huddle positions is the idea that on the week for ethereum is failing to turn green so ethereum's week weekly candle is red has a long way to get green all right while bitcoins is well in the green cardano is setting all-time highs well in the green and this reminds me of the time when bitcoin was in this area here that Ethereum pumped for a bit, or for a good bit, uh, Cardano pumped here, Litecoin pumped somewhere in the middle, and you had different major assets taking turns pumping as Bitcoin was not putting in all-time highs before a massive downturn. So now that We've had multiple pumps of big pump of Ethereum taking turns with Bitcoin. Now Cardano's in the mix. I feel that the move based off of that dynamic of multiple assets popping, it feels like it is getting close to maturity right now before um, some type of correction, maybe not even a big correction, maybe only 20% happens. And 20% wouldn't take Bitcoin very low. I mean, that's 38.7. That's not that big of a move. But... How major assets have taken did take turns up here, getting the whole market bullish right before a downturn. It's re the current situation is reminding me a little bit of that. However, let me argue with myself here. Even though Dixie's up, even though historically Bitcoin fails this posturing um, from both a weekly ten EMA and a daily two hundred and daily EMA and daily two hundred MA standpoint. There are things that are happening this time that did not happen in times of those failures. For example, going back to the daily, let me go to the chart where I drew all that stuff in. If I can find it, yes. So in these areas that I had drawn in pink here, large caps were not setting all-time highs. And you have stuff like Solana, Luna, Cardano setting all-time highs. And that crap was not happening here. That crap was not happening here. And really, the altcoin market wasn't big and crazy enough back here for that to be relevant. And so, it is possible that, similar to how we've been seeing market segments take turn being bullish, while other market segments, maybe Bitcoin or Ethereum, while they cool off, and those market segments get hot, other market segments get hot as, let's say, market segment B cools off. And then this segment, again, pulls this up, 
So this starts getting hot while these then cool down, but not cool down in a major correction fashion. And they keep turns pumping and pumping and pumping and pumping themselves up. This is starting to remind me more of, uh, of 2017, mid to late 2017. So this is kind of my bullish case against what I was just saying. And if you take a look at 2017, let's say this run right here. So let's imagine that what we had here is 2017's version of this. Even though I'm not a big fan of comparing 2017 and now, but just hear me out here. This was a time when altcoins were setting all-time highs when Bitcoin was doing something like this, uh, getting out of this uh, dip here, right? This was, a, I think, a, like a 34% dip right there versus our 55. However, so part of it, like all coins are really, I don't know. They, there might not be much of a correction, folks. So in terms of highs and lows, this is matching up from point A, B, and C pretty well. Clearly, it did not, um, Bitcoin in this posturing did not, uh, on the white fractal, did not hang out down here very long. However, the fact that Bitcoin did come down for so long and based off of here means that it's possible that what's about to happen could be even more bullish than this right here. Could be because it put in more time down low. And so if I can move this segment to the point where we started moving here, just to show you how Bitcoin's moved before, gets a little tricky. It is very possible that what happens in this area that we're currently in is just a little accumulation before Bitcoin breaks out of this and doesn't look back. And it's higher low is at all time highs. And so while people like me are waiting for a, a higher low, it's very possible because Bitcoin has moved just like this, but very similarly to this before in events that altcoins are making all-time highs which the fractal i took is in that specific perimeter the best the best uh the best fractal to take that i could find this is indicating that stuff might get real hot here real hot actually this would indicate a higher low uh over here but your first higher low back here and then some type of uh, wash out fake out before i move up so this could absolutely happen i might not ever get i might not get a higher low or we might not get a higher low so it so while i'm the first portion of this video is saying remain cautious i'm ending with the idea that it's possible that if you remain super cautious you're going to miss out unless you focus on this line that I have drawn right about 49.1, 49.15. And you can see the importance of this line. Go down to the 15 minute. And I didn't draw this line on here. It just, the price came up there. I already had this line drawn. You just see that there was a big rejection from it. At the time, Dixie screaming, all this kind of stuff. So what could happen here is we just have a little bit of consolidation only down to 41.8, fill out this range for a little bit, and then blast above here. Given that altcoins are just going bananas right now. They're going absolute bananas. Large altcoins, mid caps, some mid caps are going bananas. Um, we have multiple coins in the top 100 making all-time highs. So uh, Cardano, let's say Luna, I 
I mean, just look at this madness. Look at this madness. This stuff did not happen. This was not happening at those other, um, I guess, fake outs or failures that I highlighted earlier at the beginning of the video. So the battle right now is can altcoin, so I'll put can altcoin market pull up Bitcoin and keep Bitcoin strong while Dixie or the dollar is charging up, which would typically bring Bitcoin down. So I think the dynamic overall right now, which is going to, I don't know if this dynamic's ever happened before, but which one of this is going to win? Is it going to be a tug and pull or what might happen is it might even out. Bitcoin might consolidate and move sideways above 41K until Dixie comes back below that line and then it blasts off, which it could fail that line and come right back down in a week or two, which would mean blast off for Bitcoin. So, I know I hate to leave you with a video where I'm undecided on what's about ready to happen, but I simply can't tell. I personally got spooked. I'm holding tether. That could absolutely be the wrong move. However, I will switch my position and then buy back in if I see a definitive break above this line, particularly after a little bit of sideways movement. If it keeps charging above this line on a, you know, soon within the next few days, I, I don't know what I would do in that situation. But if I can see some consolidation, um, even above 41K, which is not much of a dip, and then a breakout, I'm not going to be looking for a, much of a higher low. I will consider that a higher low. Or, you know, maybe Bitcoin can just move sideways and wait for the uh, weekly 10 to catch up. And it doesn't get dipped much below 45K. That could easily happen. All right, a couple of other things, if I can flip back to uh, reasons to be slightly cautious, is that this could end up being a wick above before it comes back down, just like uh, this is the weekly RSI of Bitcoin, just like most attempts to get above its first time fail, but we've already um, went over that altcoins during these moments were not setting all-time hot. So it almost looks like when we get a retrace that it could be very small and on a weekly RSI scale, you simply have the RSI check back maybe a tiny bit below the EMA and just keep charging up and getting into the bullish control zone <clears throat> close to the new year and just really smacking all-time highs around that time, if I can make this green. So this is similar to one of my um, Bitcoin videos or my bit, one of my more, more recent Bitcoin videos where I said the altcoins are making me feel like, you know, Bitcoin might melt some faces. However, Dixie was not making, was not breaking that key point at that time. So this adds a little bit more reason to be cautious. However, I think the battle is going to be between will altcoins keep raging as adoption and use cases scream, and will that be enough to hold Bitcoin up as Dixie potentially uh, makes a nice run up here to this level or slightly higher, maybe up to like another horizontal like um, maybe to this one right here. So I would make a box around there thinking, hey, if there is a downturn in Bitcoin, I probably want to get long when I see Dixie come into this uh, come, come into this area, which it might not hit that. It could top out about here. But given this breakout, you got two higher lows breaking above a key feature or a key uh, horizontal. <laughs> looks like it's going to make a run up here, and it looks like it could be pretty quick. <clears throat> so... It's a mixed bag right now, folks. Uh, be cautious. It might be a good time to be taking some profits and holding a little tether. Okay, maybe not hold 100% tether or anything like that and get out of all your positions. I'm not saying that. But now might be a, a decent time to start taking some profits um, where you're in profit and waiting for your next move with the idea that this move could be getting ready to consolidate a little lower or it could be ready to have a serious uh, downside, perhaps down to the mid thirties with Dixie screaming up like that. Another thing that could be holding up uh, Bitcoin is the stock market. Stock market just going bananas as well. So this is um, 
This is the S&P 500 index right here. I mean, there's no reason to be uh, bearish on this. However, this often has down moves when Dixie breaks uh, key levels as well. So if you want to go to, actually, let's go to Dixie. So for example, let's go to the week of February 22nd. Created a down move. When Dixie was going up, you had a three week long down move with three more weeks of consolidation before breaking out of that. So in general, the stock market just had a, a blip, right? The, the last up move. However, this time you're not only having an up move, but you're breaking across the key horizontal. So it could create a little bit more of a correction than this which would in turn potentially bring Bitcoin down just a little bit. So if you uh, take a quick fractal of this, it could bring you down to uh, 419 land, something or, or slightly more, if it's just a little bit more pronounced than this. And that would likely uh, be related to Bitcoin going down to at least 41K, perhaps 36.5, perhaps even 33. Okay, so I'm going to flip back to Bitcoin one more time. Look at the 12-hour chart. I'm a fan of the 12-hour chart on Bitcoin right now. <clears throat> I'm going to look at the RSI. So we have trend line on the RSI. That's about being hit. And what could be fixing up to happen here? Is either you could get a rejection of RSI before a quick move down, or the moving average itself makes one more hump up. So I'll make that line white. Because that's the EMA of the RSI, which would have the RSI come all the way up, peak its head above the right at the bullish control zone. Put RSI back, make that green, which could bring Bitcoin all the way in the mid 50s, maybe even high 50s if something like that were to happen on the 12 hour scale. And it could happen rather quickly before a move down. Especially with altcoins mooning like they are, Cardano making all time highs. So if there's one thing to look at, it might be. Oddly enough, it might be to see how well Cardano holds this high. I think that could be your leading indicator for the whole market in specific regards to the battle between alts and Dixie. And I think you're going to be able to see it with this very line right here, which I believe is on the weekly of Cardano. Right there. So what I would do on Cardano, if you want just an easy, easy indicator whether or not things are getting ready to move down, is keep an eye on the, go to go to Cardano, put it on the weekly uh, chart on Trading View or whatever charts you use. Draw a a um, horizontal line, and if you see Cardano getting weak under here, that might be your uh, that's that that's probably going to be the best heads up that uh, Bitcoin's about ready to retrace. It, it can be literally that simple, and I honestly, I think it will. So that's personally what I'm going to be focused on, and I've given you other tips throughout time looking at things like the 15-minute to 100 EMA, which ended up you know, being a, a pretty fantastic suggestion, um, looking at 12-hour charts, things to that effect. Right, um, right now, I think it's this line on Cardano, a line in the sand, which could give you just the clearest indication of where the whole market's going to go particularly versus Dixie. And if it does uh, head down, that would probably mean red days on the S&P 500 as well, or just the general stock market reacting to Dixie uh, breaking above this point. So reasons to be very bullish, reasons to be very cautious. Uh, and when those things happen, when those ideas collide like that and they clash, it sometimes is a good time to be holding just a little bit of tether, similar to how I was stressing as Bitcoin was put in tops uh, around April and May, this could be a good time for that. So I know it's scary to sell for some people, but 
you know, if you take an asset that you're in profit in and sell, let's say 3% of it, and you hear the ka-ching or whatever noise it makes, it feels good. It might be good to uh, get up to 20% of that. Um, this is not financial advice. These are Pokemon cards I'm talking about. And I, I'm actually talking about what I would do personally. You do not have to, um, you do not have to take these actions, but personally, I'm in about 40%, maybe 35 to 40% tether. And, uh, if I had to look back on the mixture of bullishness, I would probably try to do something more like 20 to 30% tether. I went a little heavy handled, handed. I got a little spooked. In retrospect, there's also reason to be very, very bullish because the trends are aggressively up uh, without a ton of signs that it's getting ready to slow down. Uh, so that is what I personally would do. You can make your own decisions. You are ultimately responsible for uh, hitting click. Um, and But those are the suggestions that I have uh, would have for myself if I had to give myself any advice on the markets right now. So that's what we got. Um, if you liked what you saw, then in your new, go ahead and subscribe. Let me know though, if you want to be a cryptillion or a crypto crackhead, I like to know which crypto pronouns uh, folks use or want to choose. And if you are returning, hit thumbs up and leave me a comment, even if it's you suck, haha, and we'll see you next time.